I've done a lot of LED installations in my home. In fact, I'm now close to two dozen installs throughout my home. If there's a flat surface available somewhere, odds are I'm going to try to find a way to install some LED lights. But many of you out there have asked me, how do I design or how do I plan my new LED installs? Where do I mount the controller? Where do I mount the power supply? How do I run my wires? So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. From my thought process to my goals to my design plans all the way through the final installation of my latest LED project. So hang around. Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. As I mentioned in the intro, I've done a lot of LED projects. Many of these I've covered in other videos on my channel. But I realized the one thing I hadn't done, and I was asked about quite a few times, was my process or procedure when approaching a new project. How and why did I make some of the decisions that I made? How do I decide where to mount the LEDs, where to place the controller or the power supply, how to run my wiring? So when I recently just completed building a brand new desk for myself, I saw a couple of opportunities. Well, first off was another opportunity to install some LEDs. But I also realized it was a chance for me to go through my process as I did it, show you how and why I made some of the decisions that I made all the way through the final install and to see the results of the project. So before I begin any project, I first wanted to determine what are the purpose or the goals for these lights. Are they meant to serve as task lighting or actually to add lighting to a room or particular work area? Or is the goal here really just to provide decorative or ambient lighting uh, around surfaces in your home? Or in some cases, like my kitchen cabinets, it can serve both. I can turn those lower lights on as white and use them as task lighting or set them to colors with the top and the bottom to use as ambient lighting. The intent and intended use of these lights will also help determine the type of LEDs and the density of LED strips that I select. The next question that I always ask is, do I want the LEDs themselves to be visible? Now by visible, I mean I want to be able to directly see the effects of the LED lights, even if they're behind some kind of diffuser or the light is diffused. I want to be able to see the LED lights like on my motion activated stairs. Being able to see those as opposed to some of the other ambient lighting where everything is reflected off the wall makes a big difference in the mounting location. Now for my finished desk, I obviously don't need any additional task lighting on the desk itself. So my goal is to create ambient lighting underneath the surface or the bottom of the desk. So first off, I do not need any kind of true white. So I just need RGB lights. So I'll be going with my standard WS2812B RGB pixel strips. And I could probably get away with 30 pixels per meter, but since I already have 60 pixels per meter on hand, that's what I'm going to use. But my other goal here is to make sure that none of the LEDs, power supply, or anything else shows uh, when I'm finished with the project. So the first thing I have to do is I have to consider where and how I'm going to mount the LEDs. That will help me determine the number of LEDs, which will in turn tell me the size of power supply that I need. Okay, so taking a piece of the aluminum channel that I'll be mounting my LEDs in, I can use this to try out different mounting locations. Now my first option would be to mount this right up underneath uh, this overhang on the desk. Now there's a couple reasons I don't like this option for, in my case. Um, I'm going to be clamping a number of things to this, including monitors, camera mounts. I don't want this to interfere with anything clamping. And of course it would leave exposed wires on the corners, even though the channel probably wouldn't be seen unless you really look down. The next option would be to mount it directly underneath here. This will leave the aluminum channel exposed. You are going to be able to see that as addition to being able to see any wiring connections along the corners. So while those are two viable options for me, I want to look for other options. Okay, looking from up the underneath side of the desk now, I see another viable option. I have these one by twos here, and I think I can mount my aluminum channel uh, right underneath here. Hopefully you can see that from underneath. That will also give me a pretty good spot right here on the inside of this board to mount both my controller and my power supply. Again, keeping all uh, wiring hidden. Uh, I will have to make a few more cuts and, and wiring joins between each of the corners around these legs. Uh, there's also a spot over by the drawer where I'm going to have to, to make a cut, and I'll show that in a second. But I think I like that idea the best. I probably will put a push button on the corner of this desk to be able to control the lights. 
um, but I can either either drill a small hole because that's just a uh, two single wires or I can actually uh, run it along the bottom and, and kind of tuck it up and hide it here. But of those three options, I think I like this one the best. So I will measure each of these segments to know what length channel and number of LEDs I'm going to be using. Now I am going to go ahead and mount the clips on these boards now before I even uh, cut these channels. And the reason for that is that I'm going to be mounting these wire uh, trays up underneath here. And I'm going to go ahead and get those clips on there so I can just simply clip the LED channel in uh, when the LEDs are done. And just to show you that drawer section I was talking about, here is the drawer to the desk. And obviously that's going to run into my aluminum channel. But I swing around underneath here. Sorry, I hope I don't make anybody dizzy with my camera movement. I come back here to the back side of the drawer. And again, if I slide this drawer out, you'll see I still have that support bar I want to mount to. So I'll either have to drill a small hole for my wiring to connect my LED strips or run it around the bottom and connect it up to here. And it'll be the same thing on the other side down to the very end of the desk where you see I already have a power grommet installed in here. But I do have these two support bars so I'll be able to basically mount my aluminum channel clip right across here and be able to continue my LED strip all the way to the end. So I think that's the approach I'm going to take. It's going to take a little bit more cutting of aluminum channel, a little bit more soldering together of the strips, but everything should be tucked up underneath and well hidden. Now, one of the nice things about these aluminum channels, or aluminum if you happen to be across the pond, is they come with these mounting clips. And these mounting clips have very, very small screws. In fact, the screws are so small that I really don't even need to pre-drill the holes, especially in soft wood like this pine. I can just simply use a hammer and a nail to create a starting hole and the screws screw right in. It also makes it nice that it's very easy to remove the installation. I can simply unsnap the aluminum channels, uh, again, take out these mounting brackets and leave very little sign that anything was ever installed. Now, of course, you could mount your strips directly to the surface since the LED strips have an adhesive back on them. But that adhesive is not very strong into something like bare wood here. Odds are that strip is going to come loose, especially when hanging down like this. So even though the aluminum channel does cost a little bit of money, I find it much more convenient. And again, if I do decide to remove them, if I'd use adhesive or double-sided tape, especially on a finished surface, it might leave a mark or actually peel the paint off of the surface if I try to remove it later. And of course, I always do a quick alignment check here that clips need to be able to spring out on both sides. Those clips are actually mounted out oh, an eighth to a quarter inch from that back panel to allow them to spring out on both sides. If you put it flush uh, on one side, it makes it a little bit more difficult to put the track in place. Okay, at this point you can see that all of the clips for the LED channel have been installed around here. And again, even back behind the drawer section and along those supports on the end. So now the next step will be to go ahead and measure each segment in terms of how long I need to cut the LED channels, which will also determine how many LEDs will be used. Once I've measured how long each aluminum segment is going to be, I usually create a little sketch or diagram, usually not this fancy, but how long each segment is going to be, and I can then estimate how many pixels are going to be in each segment. Now, you can save yourself the conversion factor here if you do everything in centimeters or meters, but us Americans, we have a hard time with the metric system. So I'm actually converting that uh, based on 60 pixels per meter. And from there, I can estimate the total number of pixels, in my case, 174. And that tells me I'm going to need just a little bit over 10 amps for full white light. Uh, I always like to go a little bit bigger with my uh, power supply, so I'm going to opt for a 15 amp. But that's good for a couple reasons. Since I'm less than 200 pixels, I'm not going to have to deal with power injection. And if you want to know more about power injection, I have another video that talks about using uh, WS2812B pixel strips, and you can take a look at that. But I'm not going to need to do power injection. And by the way, a copy of this diagram with these calculations will be in my related blog article for this project, and you can find a link to that down in the video description. But now I know approximately how many pixels and the size of power supply I'm going to need. Okay, now that I've got my dimensions, then I like to use just a 
simple hacksaw and a little miter box. Just try to make sure that I get my edge fairly square and straight. Now, obviously, there are other ways to cut this other than a hacksaw. You could use uh, a rotary tool like a Dremel or uh, even tin snips, but I find a hacksaw is about as easy as anything. Okay, there goes my first segment. I do like to take a little bit of a file and just file the end of this a little bit just to make it smooth. Okay, there's segment one. Now all I do is repeat for my other segments. And I've mentioned this before, this aluminum channel isn't necessarily cheap, but they are specifically made for LEDs and the fact that they come with diffusers and the mounting clips, they do make for a more permanent and neater installation. Okay, and with that we have all six of our segments per our diagram cut to size and ready to go. And I've covered this in other videos, but I do like to add some of this 3M double-sided tape inside of my aluminum channel uh, because the adhesive on the back of the LED strips themselves is not that strong. And in my case, these strips will be hanging upside down. And I will not be using the optional diffuser that comes with them because the LEDs won't be visible and I want maximum light. So for those reasons to make sure my LEDs don't come loose and start to sag or droop, I go ahead and lay down a layer of this 3M double-sided tape. Okay, next I'm now going to cut LED strips to fit in each one of these segments. And this is where you might end up with a slight variation based on the estimate. Because I want to be able to cut this right in the middle of a copper pad and I don't want anything overhanging the end of the, the strip. So I'm going to cut this one right here. Again, you're trying to make sure you get right in the center of that copper to leave room on each side to add your wires. Put that in there. Now I'll quickly count. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I'll go back to my diagram in this particular segment. I did estimate 16 LEDs, so that is correct. If I end up with one more or one less, I will update it on this diagram. So then when I'm all said and done, I know exactly how many LEDs I have. Okay, now I've got all of my LED strips uh, cut for each segment, and I did actually come out and match the exact number of estimated pixels per segment on here, but they're not yet installed in the aluminum channel because the next thing we need to do is we need to solder our connectors onto each end of each LED segment. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about these JST connectors. I cover these in other videos. If you want to see more, I'll leave a link up in the corner of the screen to a video I did as a, a DIY for beginners using uh, 5 volt RGB strips. But just a quick recap, remember that your data only flows one direction indicated by the arrows on the strip. And the normal convention is to use the smaller female end on your data in and your larger male end on your data out. Uh, make sure you, whatever convention you use, you continue to follow it or otherwise you end up trying to plug in uh, two males into, together or two females together. And this is the controller that I will be using. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I have another video that is a step-by-step -step guide on how to create this controller. And I'll leave a link up here in the corner and one down in the video description. But just a real brief overview. It's going to use a Wemos D1 Mini, an optional logic level shifter. Probably not needed in this case, but I include one with all my LED projects. And there's the underneath side for the wiring. But basically you've got your black and red coming in for your five volts to power the controller. The green is going to be our data line out to our LED strip. And this blue and black wire here are going to go out to my optional uh, push button to be able to control my lights with a push button. So again, check the links if you want to know more about how to build this step-by-step uh, -step guide along with installing WLED, which is what we're going to use to control our lights. And I just thought I'd quickly mention here that if you don't have the skills or the parts or the desire to build your own LED controller. Quindor over at Quinn LED actually builds and sells pre-made controllers already installed with WLED. You can get it through his store or through Dr. Z's store. So that's just an option if you don't want to build your own. And I'll leave links to uh, that down in the video description. Okay, we've got all the JST connectors soldered in place. In some cases, I cut the JST connector short so I wouldn't have any wires hanging down. In other cases, I actually had added a short extension to be able to get them to connect around those areas like the drawer. So with the controller belt, and I went ahead and installed these in the aluminum channel, 
Uh, the last thing we want to do is a quick bench test before we put them in their final location. Okay, well, just due to the different lengths of the segments here, it was kind of hard to do a bench test actually on the bench, so I've laid this out on the floor. And just a quick run through, this is my incoming 5 volts from the power supply. Again, we're going to split that out to our controller and our LED strips. Remember, you can't run this many LEDs through the controller itself. The green is the signal wire. And over here, I've got a sketchy connection to my button to give that a test. So let's plug this in and see what we get. All right, well, we have some lights. Now, first impression might be to panic, but WLED out of the box is only configured for the first 30 pixels. So we've got the first 30 pixels there, so we're in good shape. We just need to make some changes in WLED to test the rest of the strip. Okay, so now over in WLED, we just need to go to our configuration, our LED preferences, and you notice by default it's set at that 30. So we just need to come down here to this length setting and put in our actual number of LED pixels. And you remember from the diagram, uh, for mine, I actually had 174. So as soon as I save that, we now see all the pixels are lit up. Now there are other things I would change in that LED preferences once I get it installed, but really just doing a bench test here. So we'll just try a couple of uh, quick effects just, just to make sure everything is responding as expected. And again, let's just try a, a quick effect. So everything looks good from the bench test. Once again, I'll come down here, test my button. So that's good. So now we're ready for our final install. So here's a look with everything installed. Now, I do have the LEDs turned down really dim at this point, just so it doesn't overwhelm the camera. But you also notice my wiring racks are in place. They're a mess, but they keep all the wires up off the floor. But that's why I installed the clips ahead of time. It would have been really hard to install those clips with those wiring racks in place. And by having the clips there, it was easy just to snap the aluminum channel into place. And here's a little closer look, starting at the very end of the strip. When we follow that around, you can see the JST connectors, which are wrapped up fairly tight, a little bit of slack in there, but uh, not enough that they hang down and become visible. So we follow that around. Again, the JST connector, making all my connections. And we can follow that around, but let's take a look at the controller mount. And here is the start of the strip. Again, you can see the controller just mounted. Now, I did put that in a 3D printed enclosure uh, with a couple tabs so I could screw it in. If you don't have a 3D printer, uh, you could use a little project box. You could double side tape it to the inside. I also use the Wago clips to make my electrical connections. I was going to mount the power supply right next to the controller, but since I had a wire rack right there, I was able to just put the power supply there. And if we come around on the outside edge, again, there is my little push button control, again, with really no exposure to any of the wiring. And here's a look at the finished product. Again, you have all of the different options of WLED available to you. That includes all the various effects, and you can just use a solid color as well. But the full plethora of WLED is available. And as I mentioned before, it's nice because when I'm sitting at the chair, by having this push button right next to me, it gives the ability to simply turn the lights off and on and to control some different colors and effects with this button once I program it. And as you can see, when the LED lights are off and the normal lights are on, uh, you can't see any of the wiring, at least not from the LEDs. There's some other wiring around here that's visible. But everything in terms of the LED installation is completely hidden. The only thing that's even slightly visible is that little tiny push button there on the side for me to be able to control it from my desk chair. So that's the way I approach most of my LED projects in terms of planning and the actual installation steps. If you found something in this video helpful or useful, maybe in your own projects, if you'd be so kind as to hit that like button down there, that lets both me and YouTube know you'd like to see more videos like this. And think about hitting that subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos. And ding that little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release a new video. And as always, I would like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.